<laughs> it's a second chance. A chance for a new life. They are scared and sometimes curious. What these abandoned dogs don't know is they are on their way to a forever home. It's 10 a.m. on a Tuesday, and Jim Halpin leaves his home base in Dedham, Massachusetts, on his way to Hagerstown, Maryland. We joined him for a trip that he and shelter volunteers will make countless times this year. It's crazy, but it's wonderful. Well, we are driving south, a drive of another sort. The route of this mission is underway in Tennessee. Shelter's Rescue partners with a group that is literally on call to rescue puppies and dogs, sometimes just minutes before they would otherwise be put down. There's only seven of them this time. Unless I get them right away, they don't come in real healthy. The Tennessee team not only provides safe haven, they will spend weeks preparing the dogs for adoption. Vet them, work with them as much as possible. Sometimes they're really skittish with people, just deal, you know, pet them, get them more friendly with people, as best you can. We arrive in Maryland shortly before 7. Meanwhile, in Tennessee, 28 vetted dogs begin their journey to New England. An early morning wake-up call, motivated by a meeting unlike any other. In 24 hours, we're going to drive 1,000 miles and get three hours of sleep. On the other hand, at 2.30 in the morning, when I'm picking those dogs up and putting them in the van, no one will stay forever. It's amazing. Hey, David. The exchange in an empty parking lot on the side of a highway. A makeshift play area set up to give the dogs a break. It's 2.30 in the morning. Yeah, on the fun, huh? <laughs> These guys, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Yeah. Us, not so much, but there's a reason for that, right? Yeah. We want it to be one trip for the dogs. So we get down here, as you know, get a couple hours sleep, and they just came in from Tennessee. They got here probably 15 minutes ago, and in eight hours, they're going to be back in Boston and safe forever. David Gomez makes the drive north, knowing what would happen if these puppies were not transported. A massive amount of dogs that they just can't keep up with, so they just they end up euthanizing a lot of dogs. It's not any kind of mistreatment of the animals. Are they going in a medium? Yeah. Just a massive overflow of dogs, and it's, uh, it's really sad. The people who are going to kill themselves aren't bad people. But not these dogs. Not this time. Well, there's 28 families going to be real, real happy in the next two weeks. A network of cables and kennels and big hearts got them to this point. Volunteers work quickly to get them to the next. In just shy of an hour, the final leg begins. On the ride home, the stories about how they came to be here unfold. They found a whole litter of puppies in a Tupperware bowl floating down a river. Somebody just threw them in a the river. Okay, hence they were named the Tupperware puppy. And it's, you know, it's never ending. These are our true screamers. 11 a.m. on Wednesday, and the team has been preparing for our arrival. All right, these little guys are going to go first. Okay. Robin Corbron helps oversee the transition like a well-oiled machine. It is a process designed to give these dogs relief as soon as possible. We bring the dogs in off of a transport, and yeah, it's very traumatic for them. They've had a whirlwind of emotions that have gone through. They don't know what's going on. Get down on their level. Hey, it's okay. Everything's going to be fine. Does it have a, um, a mark on its wrist from surgery? Denny Goldman makes sure each puppy has an identity. These are the pictures of all the dogs, and we have them separated by their litters or their groups, their play groups. Um, and that's how the bandanas are color-coded. With some instant love and a bowl of food, these pups are finally able to get some rest. So a thousand miles in just 24 hours and 28 dogs are on their last stop before finding their forever homes. This process, incredibly, happens every two weeks. Good boy, you're being a good boy. But the work doesn't end with the transport. Oh, he's really cute. Good boy. Each puppy is vetted and often treated for ailments of neglect. He's missing a few. From there, an endless stream of care with one singular goal. To have the dogs that don't have homes get homes. In a perfect world, this, this place wouldn't exist because no dog would have to worry about finding a home. Think about how resilient these dogs are. You've seen these dogs now for the last couple of days, and they went from a bad home to a kill shelter to our farm in Tennessee. They're wagging their tails, they're happy. Hey, you're safe. Hey, you're safe. It's pretty cool, I wish we could be like that.